I think it's like you have to like really respect the community power that exists in mm -hmm. that community, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you are a newcomer, you know, because it doesn't matter if you've lived in that community, like, you know, these people who have been here and advocated for the community for years, like you have to really respect them, learn from them and try to figure out like, you know, what, what is like, you know, what, what are they struggles, what are the struggles with and how do we help fix that? Hey guys, before I start, I just wanted to say thank you so much to those who support my channel. I'm so excited to make more videos. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Janet. Welcome to Janet Asks. If you're a high schooler like me who also struggles in figuring out what you want to do with your career life, then this channel is for you. I'll be interviewing people of all different occupations, and hopefully that can help you guys understand these careers a little bit better and help you figure out which career is best for you. So if you're interested, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Today, our special guest is someone very cool because he worked in a lot of different companies and is very experienced in the business and marketing industry. And his job involves helping the community and helping families in need, which is a job that we all need right now, especially in this pandemic. And he worked as the community affairs coordinator for about a year in Lyft. And he currently works as the director of development and communications of the Southeast Asian Development Center. So let's all welcome. Justin. Okay. Hi, Justin. How are you? Good. How are you today? I'm really good. And thank you so much for joining me here on Janet Asks. I'm so excited to learn more about your job as the Community Affairs Coordinator. And the job title itself sounds amazing. So are you ready to get started? I am. Ask away. Okay, so first off, was a community affairs coordinator, like what role did you play in Lyft as the community affairs coordinator? So the, the role of community affairs coordinator is, is pretty unique. So it's really, you're the primary interface from the community and the Lyft team. So whether it is going to community meetings, meeting neighbors on the street or going to city hall, um, you're kind of the, the first, the first, the first person that they would talk to in um, really working through any issues. Um, primarily, with this specific position, it is around the conversion of parking spots into bike parking. Um, as as you would imagine, it's a very contentious issue changing um, street parking into bike parking, um, as parking in San Francisco and many of the Bay Area cities is is, is typically tight. Um, so it's really up to the community affairs team to provide like a proper plan of like why we chose this spot. You know, why, why does it make sense in an engineering point of view, in a planning point of view, and in the political point of view is like the city of San Francisco objective is to increase the mode share of sustainable transportation. So like why weaving those together and providing a narrative, you're really probably to equip um, the community with uh, the information to hopefully make a good decision about their use of space. Because in the end, even though it is city streets and the city can do as they deem fit, um, we really wanna make sure the community has feedback and um, fully understands what's going to be happening with the introduction of bikes. Yeah, that's a very unique uh, job. And I think helping the community and being able to communicate with everyone is really cool. and. Yeah, San Francisco is a very busy city transportation wise. So I think your job is very well needed. And um, now I know that you have done a lot of different jobs in different companies. So can you kind of explain your whole career journey starting from like where you went to college? Yeah, so I graduated with a bachelor's in international relations um, at UC Davis, as well as a minor in Asian American studies. Um, so uh, I actually was simply touring the Capitol Museum at the time in Sacramento when my friend figured out why I was downstairs and told me to go upstairs for an interview at a at Assembly Member Fiona Ma's office. They had an opening for an internship um because i was leaving college and it was a great opportunity so i went up there interviewed and interned at fiona ma's office for a couple for i think four or five months um before i moved over to join um the asian pacific islander um, caucus up inside sacramento so that is the kind of the 
the meeting space for all the Asian American lawmakers, both on the assembly side and Senate side, to really work on policy resolving, revolving Asian Americans. Um, and then um, out of that, I transitioned over to help run a campaign for um, assembly member, now Senator, uh, State Senator uh, Richard Pan. Um, so turning that district from Republican to Democratic and kind of run the campaign. So I ran a lot of the, the precinct planning for where, where should we where should we send volunteers to knock on doors and calls, a lot of those training volunteers. And then I moved down to Stanford to uh, manage a higher education, a higher education grant. Um, I really just want to change the space at, um, area. I moved, I missed the Bay Area. Sacramento is pretty, um, it's, it's, Bay, so it's pretty hot as well. So I miss being home. And then um, there I led, I ran the focus around educational outcomes around students that went to community colleges. Um, as that's a field that's pretty understudied as a whole. I think we understand the outcomes if you go to Stanford or Yale or Harvard, but what are the outcomes that community colleges, state schools generate the vast majority of college graduates? So we really want to measure that, especially with the advent of online learning. Mm -hmm. And then converted that, um, I met grant management with a lot of numbers and figures. So I've converted that to kind of do some minor accounting um, in, my, in my spare time. And then I found my way to a marketing agency that was focused around um, ad buying. So I was a, a media purchaser for Giant Creative, which uh, did advertising for pharmaceuticals, like for Russell Klein Smith or um, for Boston Scientific or Abbott. So we just did these major campaigns for orphan drugs, basically. And then I moved over to do kind of more social good marketing. So worked for a um, good shop that was basically like Ebates, but instead of giving the money to you, it would give the money to a charity of your choice, um, which is really innovative at the time. Um, and then from there, I joined, us, I joined a small um, a small company that managed the bike sharing program in San Francisco um, on the verge of their expansion through the five cities. So they expanded to Oakland, Berkeley, Emeryville, San Jose, and San Francisco. Um, so I joined to doing outreach with them. So it was the same role as what Lyft was because Lyft had acquired a company like halfway through my time there. So we were just going to every city. This, all the cities had unanimously approved this partnership that we, were fun, that, that we had funded. Um, but it was my job to make sure we removed all the landmines that the planning team um, and politi politically to make it feasible um, to make that happen for every place. Like yeah, our job was to kind of clear, you know, clear the lane so you know, our, our teams can deploy stations and expand the bike care system as easily as they could. Yeah, um, I think it's so cool how you've, you've done so much after college. And I think the more you experiment with your career, the more you'll learn and um, ex get more experience. And as a high schooler, I think of college as kind of the introduction of what real life work look like. However, I'm sure there's also a huge difference between what you learn in college and what it actually is like in real jobs. So how is what you majored in, co in college similar to what you did as the community affairs coordinator and what are some differences? Um, I think for me in college, I focus on like economic development. So really learn about community development from an international sense of like how to build communities. And that really, I think, helped inform me of how I understand, you know, why transportation is important. Like, you know, usually when you wake up, the first thing you do is not, I'm going to get in a car, I'm getting a bike. So I have to go to school, I have to go to work, I have to go somewhere, and I need a car, a bike to get there. So usually how you get there is not the first thing you think about, you know. It's like I take a bus, I'm like, okay, now I have to think where I need to go. Now, usually you know where you're going to go and where you what you use is kind of like the in-between. So um, I think what helped a lot was like how is interdisciplinary international relations was. We had such a broad reach of subjects. So it wasn't just like studying political science. It wasn't just studying economics. It wasn't just studying, um, you know, like anthropology. It was like you had to do all of that. So by being very holistic in how you view things, you kind of get to see how interconnected all these issues are. So when I see things like inequality um, or why, you know, like, you know, why communities are less well off than other communities, like, you know, this impact of bad roads means less access to jobs, less access to healthy growth produce, and that means less access to, you know, healthy families. So those type of things all interplay, like, it's not just one thing can solve everything. It's like, 
you know, a new bike lane, a new bike rack isn't the be all end all, but it's a start of a conversation of how to build more resilient and sustainable communities. And by be able to communicate and talk in these different fields is really able to help better relate and see things from other people's point of view. Like I think in the end, like even people who oppose you mostly aren't doing it out of ill will or malice or they hate you. They're usually, this is because this is their worldview. So it's really up on my, me to under, help on myself understand, educate myself of like how they see the world and how, you know, they're making a rational choice on their behalf. And it's, I really want me to understand where they're coming from, be able to relate to them and be able to really talk to them. Yes, um, that, that makes a lot of sense. And um, there's a lot of different job options in a business setting and a lot of different jobs in general. So why did you exactly choose to become a community affairs coordinator? Um, for me, I, I love the bike. So like I got, there was a bike company looking for a marketing outreach role. And I was like, I'm going to grab it and see where that goes. Like I never had been, like I did constituent work up in Sacramento. Like we had constituents going through the Capitol. So I, I knew how to talk to people. Like I, and being in the Capitol, you talk to a lot of different people. You got, you know, students that come up to the Capitol, your lobbyists come up, you have um, this college groups come up. So you have to make sure you talk to different fields. And even if you're not specialized in it, like how to communicate. So I was like, oh, I can do this. And like they to build, to be a part of something transformational as converting cars to bikes is just a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? Like I gotta go outside and see there's a bike station out of my house. And I know like I helped install that. And I think that's such a unique opportunity. And about like something that I think it's like when I did marketing for coupon, it's like what is like I know I can give a hundred dollar check to a SBCA at the end of the year because we generated that content, but like it doesn't feel tangible. But knowing I put a bike in the street, knowing that someone's face lights up when they ride an electric bike, like that stuff is really fulfilling and really joyful. And seeing how communities really navigate that, and especially like for communities that have never seen access or investment before, that's really important to them because it's not it's not just another tech tool to shovel resources from the back end like though you're giving something to them and giving them something that every city has yeah um yes that's really good that you chose a job that not only you love but also helps other people it helps the community and with communicating with so many different people and so many interactions i'm sure there's a lot that you do every day in such big companies like lyft so can you elaborate on what your daily life as the community affairs coordinator looks like? So it's a lot every day. I mean, I think um, eventually I started leading a team, but I think, you know, the first, you know, when I first started, it was a lot, it was like, you're just planning, you're figuring out like, what's the best route? Because I think additionally, we also tried to bike to all our places <laughs> um, because we believe that, you know, this is, this, you know, we have to use what we believe in. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it took a little longer. So somebody was paying the route, but also like planning the strategy. Like, is this a residence? Is this a business? What's the best hour to visit? You know, like if it's a residence, going to general working hours is probably not the best use of your time. You should probably send them a mailer or, you know, mm -hmm. or um, post, you know, you know, give a flyer under their door because they're probably not home from eight to five. If it's a business, try not going, not don't go during lunch rush, you know, like be respectful of their, of their time. Um, and figuring out like if we need language support, if it's like a Chinese owned business, do I pull in another coordinator who can speak Chinese or can speak Spanish? Like, those are things we want to make sure we meet them at the, at the, at the level and we kind of organize, organize that. And then like a lot of it's like meeting with people, usually you're meeting with people, you're going to city hall meeting with a lawmaker. Um, I'm working with the planning team because the planning team is one that designs where and what they are, right? So, and our job is to sell that. So I had to work with them to figure out like, well, why are you choosing that? How, why is it that big? You know, should, we, should it be on the sidewalk? It should be on the street. You know, how many bikes is it? You know, what's it connecting to? Because I need to know all these details because they see it from like a urban planning point of view. And I need to take all that planning talk into what the community can hear and understand in an easy way of a why it matters and why it makes sense. And then, we're, and then I usually meet with the city regularly as well because um, the unique thing is this is a public private partnership, which means that this is like a public utility that's privately operated. So like Lyft operates it, but the city, it's a city program 
in a way. So we have to be really close collaboration of our city partners in everything we do, including the outreach, because um, in essence, like it is still like a legislative, they still have, they still have a past of legislation to make it happen. So we gotta make sure like everyone's on the same page and there's a lot of communicating through all these different people because if we fail in any of those realms, the thing can fail and we start over again. And that's like six months of work it takes to get a station down. So like, that's a lot of work that we want sure that we, we have everyone included. Wow, wow that, that is a lot of work. And I just find it really unique and interesting that you have to, you guys have to like fight. That's pretty um, unique. And in these big companies, I know that there, as you said, there is a lot of communicating and I think I'm sure there's a lot of different jobs involved. So what types of people do you normally work with career-wise and, and what other careers did you interact with typically in your job? So internally, like it's, it's very cross-functional. So like, you know, you would work, my primary contact was with what we call the planning team, our planning engineers. They're the ones that can design the specs of the site and we measure everything out and see it both from a technical and from a planning standpoint. Then we work closely with like the operations team, like operations, which focus on like bike delivery, bike, bike maintenance. Like we want to understand like how that works because that's important for the community to know. Mm -hmm. Like, do you wash the bikes? Do you clean them? How do you fix them? What do they look like? How do you use them? Like, like those are kind of questions communities always ask because I think they're interested in the device as well. So we have to be rushed in that. And then we work with legal because there's liability. Anything you put in the public realm has liability entitled to it. And different entities have different rules. So stuff you put on like a school school property, like compared to a hospital, compared to city streets is all different. So we have to make sure we clear the legal hurdles there. And I think kind of the last is our policy team, um, but public policy. So they can have set the tone of like what Lyft's vision is for transportation and investment. So like, that means like, do we partner with a community-based organization out in the Bayview to do community outreach and engagement for us or help sign up people for low-income membership because like I don't look for I don't look like many people in the Bayview or Excelsior so like I'm not representative of the or know the community and not well versed in that so like do we find what partners do we need what investments do we need and like what is our vision when the city says they want this and like what what fits within the lift vision of transportation is important because I think you know as a bigger company it's important that we align with the larger objective of of, of the company. Yeah, there, that's a lot of different people and a lot of different jobs involved in um, one com company. And based on your description of your job, you get to connect with a lot of people and help them, which sounds amazing to me. And so what is your favorite part about being a community affairs coordinator? Um, to me, it's, it's learning communities. Like, honestly, like I got to explore areas, the Bay Area that I had never been before. Like, you know, I, I biked a lot through San Francisco and Oakland and San Jose, but it's, it's different when, you know, because like these were citywide expansions, like before the bike share system was only down in San Francisco. And then our goal was to reach from, you know, Embarcadero to Ocean Beach, from, from Marina to SF State. Like we want to reach the entire city. So like I get to learn every corner where we're evaluating thinking. So every street that I looked at, like I can just see like every corner that we have proposed something or measured something and which group I've talked to around that. And I think I thought to know different neighborhoods, different communities, different restaurants, um, and just how they view the world. And I think learning people's stories of why they love where they live is such an important value. And that's listening to their stories, right? And I think that's so much humility that it puts me in. Like, I think that's a humble place where like I'm, I'm here carrying a message of like changing parts of your community, but really like I'm learning a lot from you because this is your space. Like that I'm, I'm just, I'm just one of many um, people being a, part, being a part of it. So that would want to be part of it. So I think that was like the most fulfilling part is like I take is meet these great advocates, these great stewards of the community that um, I would have never have met before. And I think, I think that's, that's, that's always inspiring because you know, when they love people, you 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 feel it when people love the community and it's a, it's a very inspiring thing yeah that's amazing i never would have known that you have learned so much about 
the whole like comedian from Ridge Robin probably learned about it more than a lot of other everyday people. And um, so what are three important skills that an effective community affairs coordinator should have to succeed in their career? I think first is, um, I think it's first is humility. Um, I think it's like, you have to like really respect the community power that exists in mm -hmm. that community, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you are a newcomer, you know, it doesn't matter if you've lived in that community, like, you know, these people who have been here and advocated for the community for years, like you have to really respect them, learn from them and try to figure out like, you know, what, what is like, you know, what, what are they struggles, what are the struggles with and how do we help fix that? You know, like we can't do everything. We can't, we don't have the, the money or bikes are not, cannot fix all the ills in the community. But I think it is important that we are able to be responsive to the narrative of, of that community. Yeah. Uh, I think the second is a sense of um, perseverance. Like this sense of like, there's a lot of anger at you, a lot of anger. <laughs> And I think it's like be able to really just roll off your shoulder. Like this is part of a bigger transformation. It takes a lot of, a lot of change, you know, like parking is underpriced in San Francisco. It costs a hundred dollars to park your car on the street for all year long. Um, and that does not include like the, the placard abuse that certain people do for handicapped spaces. So like, and like with that low rate of parking, though people don't want to give up their parking space or free parking in some neighborhoods, right? Um, to bikes, but like, Three, like three park, car parking spots can be up to 21 bikes. So mm -hmm. the, the, the change that happens is monumental, but it's getting the people to bite and getting people to really understand that. And I think, um, and not taking it personally, like they can yell you out of the room, they can curse you out of the room, but you know, you'll be like, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back next week. I'll be back next month at your next meeting. And that takes, you know, a certain temperament. And I think, but I think, but I think overall, it's just like knowing like, I'm no, you believe in the mission and you'll be back. And I think third is the sense of, um, I think it's almost like it's this like uh, um, intrepidness, I want to call it, like this fearlessness that you can't be walking in, you're going to be, because I think it goes into the other side, but you're, you're walking in and creating change and it's hard and you have, to be, have a lot of courage behind that in your voice. Like you have to be very sure of yourself. You have to be very confident that this is what I want to happen because it's like, they're sure what they want. They want their parking. So you have to be sure that you want that change and be really convinced of it. And I think that's really, that's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that those all make make sense. Like humility, what you said about humility, perseverance, and and fearlessness is that seems like what that seems like important qualities for your job. And um, so, what did you learn skill wise from being a community affairs coordinator? Um, overall, I learned a lot about urban planning and how the way cities are designed. I mean, working closely with both an internal planning team and closely with city partners, got an insight that I guess was unique because you get the sense of like how the private world sees the world and how the public realm sees the world. And you have to talk, talk, talk both sides <laughs> at all times. Mm -hmm. So one point is like, I can talk Lyft says, but also because we're a city program, I have to talk what SF says. Like I, I like I represent I represent both parties in this room, mm -hmm. and I think that's a very unique way of like interfacing with the city. Um, and I think that was unique because I think I was not versed in urban planning or like planning, you know, like you know, like why bus stops are so far from racial or why things should not be like schools. Like I think that was, was pretty far from my realm. But I think really understand that and really understand traffic patterns, right? Like of how people move around. Um, I was, was, was really valuable. And I think, um, I think also the sense of learned a lot of like interpersal skills um, in, in relationship management. It's important because I think holding relationships is, is just such a crucial part. Like it feels like something that you only do in high school and colleges where you study, but I feel like relationship managing is, is, is key because when things get, when things get hot, when things get heated or, you know, calling in, texting your aid at city hall, like what's happening is such a valuable thing, you know, to have, you know, how, how, you know, how do we manage this, you know, and having someone on your side, 
um, is, is, is valuable and having the right allies. So I think that's, you know, it, it sounds like essentially something that's so simple, but I think it's a skill that I don't think is always worked with from college. Um, and really like, it's really powerful when you work in such a interdisciplinary space, and especially with so many partners, because it's like who you know makes it so much easier. Like, you know, it makes it a whole harder. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's really the powerful part. Yeah. Um... And, and then the last part like, is organization. Like we worked on over 700 permits. So that requires a monumental task in multi-team management of how to bring that all to, to pieces. Because you have 700 projects that have six month timelines. Like how do you organize that so you aren't overloaded at any given moment? And if things bounce back, like where do you put that in the pipeline? And like, you know, it's like that's that 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 was really also like really valuable. It's like how to project manage on like this rapid, massive, massive scale, which was I've never done before. Yeah, um, those are very cool and unique uh, skills to learn that I think not a lot of um, other people, um, like not a lot of jobs would teach you. And yeah, so we're actually on our final question and all of your insights and what you said have been very helpful and very interesting. But if you could give any final advice or words of encouragement to high schoolers or college students who are interested in becoming a community, if, Affairs coordinator or people who are interested in, in this type of field, um, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, I think B, this is really, I think, is just about, about on, 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 if you want to work with communities and how you want to do it. Because, like, you know, I had, I had coordinators who came from the planning world, I had a coordinator that came from cognitive science, you know. I had one that came from a business world. Like they, they, they all believed in biking. You know, they believed that biking would change that. Like I think this is a, a job really on um, interpersonal skills. Um, like, and you learn a lot on other details as well through 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 that. But um, I think like not to be too tied in your major. I think uh, and to be really broad. Like you know, if you want to focus on biology or mechanical mechanical engineering, um, I think just take a couple classes in different fields in totally, in total left, left field. Like I took classes in botany and Arabic studies and medieval Japanese history. And I think those help really like bring, pull you out of your comfort zone because that's what it's like when you're talking to people who are from communities that you don't understand. Like it's a totally different world and you just have to do a crash course on really able to learn and listen and hear from them. And I think by taking those other fields is really important to really understand like there are places that you're being uncomfortable and that's fine. And it's just your willingness to be humble and to learn is such, it's such that's the value, that's the valuable lesson that you have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are really good advice. And yeah, thank you so much, Justin, for um, giving all these insights and what your and what you've said are all really interesting and your job is very Cool and unique and yeah thank you so much of course my pleasure okay thank you hey guys thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned a lot from justin about being a community affairs coordinator i learned a lot and i think it's very inspiring to learn and to know that someone cares so much about our community and where we live and about the transportation which i think is a very it's not a very common topic people talk about, but it's definitely important, especially where I live. I live in, near Silicon Valley, near San Francisco. So I think his job is definitely very unique. And I think, I, and I hope that some of you guys might end up going into similar careers and helping out the community. And yeah, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to follow more updates on my Instagram, please follow my Instagram. On my Instagram, I post a lot of things about Taylor Swift art and more updates. So if you're interested in that, please follow my Instagram. And if you guys want, you guys can DM me and rant about school stuff. I'm open to that. <laughs> I will love to talk to you guys more. And yeah. So if, please comment down below. Um, what you guys like to do outdoors like right now we live in uh, where most of us are 
um, in quarantine, so we don't always have that many opportunities to go outside. But if you guys want to, what would you like to do? Like, do you guys like biking, hiking, or whatever? I personally love just going on walks and going to nearby parks and to me that's very relaxing so yeah please let me down below so yeah i hope you have a nice day and thank you so much bye